In this video, we'll be going over example 12. A ball is thrown upward with an initial velocity of 15 meters per second. It reaches its peak and then returns to the thrower achieving a downward speed of 15 meters per second. We're asked to find how much distance the ball travels. So that's the first thing we need to find. And then the second is the total displacement of the ball for this trip. So similar to example six, we've switched around what we want you to do. We want you to come up with a series of steps as if you were teaching a fellow classmate how to solve this problem. And so you want them to be detailed enough so that the student could just follow your steps and be able to get to the solution following that process. And so much like example six, I started off and went in detail about how you use the problem solving framework to help guide you and form, form these steps so that you have a clear organized plan to get to the solution. So since we've already gone over that, I've got the steps listed here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take those steps and we're going to label them on a pre-worked solution for this problem. So starting with the first step, start by choosing a coordinate system to designate a positive direction. I like to designate up as the positive direction. So this is step one right here, where I've designated the upward direction to be the positive y direction. Then in step two, we're asked to break the motion up into two parts, upward and downward. Draw a motion diagram for the upward motion with decreasing spacing between dots since the acceleration due to gravity is opposite the direction of velocity. So looking at these spacing of the dots, we have a decreasing spacing as we're going up. So we're good there. And this is our motion diagram for the upward direction. So we'll label that. I just wrote an aside here that the same dot spacing will, will be there for the downward direction. It's just that now as you go down you're having increasing spacing which makes sense because your acceleration and your velocity are both in the downward direction on the way down so moving to step three we have labeled the upward motion diagram the first point has a position of zero meters and an initial velocity of 15 meters per second so that's this blue box right here and then the final dot has a velocity of zero meters per second in an unknown final position. So that's this green box up at the top. For the overall span of the motion, it's, there's an acceleration due to gravity of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So that's this bracket here that covers the whole motion. So that's three. And then time is a question mark because we're not given any information. So let's take a look here and look how detailed these steps are. So I could have just left it as label the upward motion diagram. But the problem with that is, is, is it's hard to convey what information you know and what you don't know. So you want to be as thorough as you possibly can about what you expect the motion to be and where the given information is on this diagram to help teach somebody who may not know how to do this. So moving on to step four, we have, we need to find the total distance the ball travels and its total displacement. Find the maximum height of the ball, which is the final position on the upward motion diagram. Multiply the result by two to get the total distance since it'll travel the same amount on the way down. We know displacement is dependent on the initial and final positions, and since they are the same, we expect the displacement to be zero. So this step is describing what we need to find in this problem. And so what we've outlined is that we just need to find the distance that the ball travels to reach its maximum height, and we multiply that by two because it's got to travel the same distance on the way down. So that's what 2yf is, and that will be step four.
And then we talk about we want to also find displacement, but based off of what we know already about the problem, we're going to be starting and ending in the same spot, which means that we should expect a displacement of zero. So that again, that's step four. Moving on to step five, compare our known and unknown variables to the four kinematics equations. And then step six, choose the kinematic equation without time and write down the expression for displacement. So here we're just looking at all the information we're given and what, we're, what we want to determine. And then based off of that, we choose the equation without time, which is the equation that we have listed here. And so this is step five and six. And we also need to write down our expression for displacement. And if you happen to forget that, go back into your note packet or go back into the textbook and just refresh your memory on what the equation is for displacement. Moving on to seven, use the kinematic equation to determine the final position on the way up, so the maximum height. And so that's where we used our kinematics equation. We started from our known equation, and then we substitute in all of our variables, and we determine a final position of 11.5 meters. So it reaches a maximum height of 11.5 meters. So this is step seven, getting to this point here. And then for step eight, we multiply the maximum height by two to get the total distance traveled since the ball returns back to the thrower. Remember, yf is just the distance to the top. It still needs to come back down to, to be able to be included for the total distance. And so this is step eight, this boxed part here where we multiply that maximum height by two to get 23 meters. And then after that, we take our displacement equation where we're starting, we're, we have a final position of zero meters minus an initial position of zero meters, giving us a total displacement of zero meters. And then we have a little explanation here about why, why that is. So again, this is step eight, answering the two parts of the question that we were asked. And then we check off and evaluate our answer. And that's usually left to that person just to see if they made any particular mistakes.